I want to take a look today at how we can build HDR or high dynamic range images in Adobe Lightroom. Now, Lightroom has a great HDR building tool because for one thing, compared to Photoshop, when you build an HDR in Lightroom, it stays as a raw file, whereas Photoshop and Photomatix and many of those other plugins, it doesn't maintain that raw editability when it gets sent into that program. So I personally love to build HDRs in Lightroom. It definitely has its shortcomings, but for a great, simple way to make very realistic looking HDRs, I think Lightroom does a great job. Now, the process is super simple. All we want to do is start with a series of images that are bracketed in their exposure. So for example, here I have five pictures that are varied by one stop of exposure between each one. So I have a properly exposed image, an image that's one stop under, two stops under, one stop over, and two stops over. Now, you can also do it with three images, two images, seven images, 10 images. There's really no limit to that. All we're going to do is, though, we're going to tell Lightroom, these are the images we care about. Let's take these and let's merge them into one. Let's take the dynamic range of multiple photos and make one master image with the dynamic range of all of them. It's super, super powerful. So once we have our images, I'm going to take these and I'm going to select them. And then I'm going to go to Photo, Photo Merge, and HDR. And it's going to take it a second. What it's going to do is build a preview of what this HDR is going to look like. Now, it's not actually doing the merging right now. It's simply previewing it. We'll actually make the HDR in a second. But there are some options in here that I think we need to talk about. So the first option in the upper right hand corner is one that says auto align. What auto align does is if your tripod moved or maybe you were hand holding the HDR, this specific image was taken from a drone. If there's any sort of movement shot to shot to shot, Auto Align will do its best to make those layers or those images perfectly stack on top of one another. It'll keep things sharper, make things look a lot better. Personally, I don't see any reason to turn off Auto Align. I think it's a very helpful tool. So I'm going to leave that one on. Auto Tone. This one confuses people. You can notice if I turn it on, the image looks a lot more HDR-y, you could say, when you turn it on. And you go back to normal, it kind of looks like what we started with. What Auto Tone is actually doing is there's no magic going on here. It's simply this. When you turn on Auto Tone, if you were to merge the HDR with that checkbox checked, and then take that final HDR that it just created and bring it into Lightroom's develop module, you would see all of the sliders in the develop module already dragged out of their default positions. Essentially, with Auto Tone on, Lightroom is editing your photo for you, which is why it looks better to start with. But to me, I would rather do that editing myself. So I like to turn off Auto Tone because I find that I would rather make those decisions versus letting Lightroom make them for me. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't turn Auto Tone on, let Lightroom make its best guess, and then modify Lightroom's guesses. You can pick whatever way you want to do. I just like to start with the bare bones and build it up from there. So those are our first two options. The third thing is the de-ghosting amount. So ghosting is essentially what happens when an object moves between your multiple photos. So if we look on this bridge here in this image, there's a car here that's the same car and it's in multiple places because it was captured one after the other after the other. And in this image, it doesn't look that weird because you might have multiple cars on the bridge. But in some cases, ghosting looks very strange and it's super obvious and it really, really screams that it's an HDR photograph. So what I recommend with deghosting is start it on none if you don't think you have anything that moved shot to shot to shot. But if you do see some ghosting, increase it one step at a time until that ghosting is gone. I usually recommend that you keep the deghosting as low as possible while still maintaining the ghosting going away. In this case, I don't mind that car there multiple times, so I'm actually going to leave it on none because it'll speed up the, the creation time of this HDR a little bit. But in reality, I'd increase it till the ghosting went away. All right, so auto align aligns your layers for you or your images for you. Auto tone will automatically adjust it or edit it for you in the develop module. I like that one off. And then deghosting, the higher you go, the more aggressive it's going to be in removing things that appear in multiple photographs. So with that said, I'm going to hit Merge here. And what's going to happen is Lightroom's going to take those five images and it's going to put them into one. Now, the amazing part, like I said at the beginning of the video, 
if you were going to do this in Photoshop or Photomatix or some other program, what you would get out of those programs would be a PSD file or a TIFF file, something like that. And the problem with a PSD or a TIFF is it's not raw. It doesn't have that raw editability that a nice raw photo has. In Lightroom, however, it keeps it raw, which is a huge bonus for us because we have all that powerful editing control even after we make the HDR. So we can see it's done here. A sixth image just appeared. And right off the bat, it's really not that striking. It looks kind of like the other ones. In fact, it looks exactly like the other ones. If you look at the lineup, you'd be hard pressed to tell which one is the HDR and which one's not. But the one thing to tell is that this one now in the file name has dash HDR at the end of it. So that's a clear giveaway. But What's really the giveaway is once we take this into the develop module, how much ability we have to edit it. So check this out. I'm going to go D for develop here and bring it in. The real effect shows itself the most, I think, with the shadows and the highlights slider. So I'm going to bring the shadows up, and you'll see how much detail there is in those shadows. And that's not the crappy kind of detail that you sometimes get in shadows. That's good detail. There's not a lot of noise in there because that's actually the detail that we're seeing from one of the lighter images of the HDR. The same is true with highlights. We can bring highlights down a lot and bring a lot of nice detail back into that sky. So together with a little bit of shadows, a little bit of highlights, I might add some contrast because a lot of times uh, when you do an HDR, it kind of kills the contrast. So I like to increase the contrast a little bit we can see we've got a really, really nice image here. So check this difference out. I'm going to go back to the grid view, and I'm going to grab this as well as one of the non-HDR photos and look at a little comparison here. And we can clearly see on the left we have the original one, just a standard DNG file right out of the camera or out of the drone. On the right, we've got an HDR. And you look at the difference. The sky has more detail. The shadows have more detail. It's less noisy. Everything kind of comes together and gives us that dynamic range we were after. So to me, I love using HDRs in a very realistic way, in a way that gives me a way to cheat and give my camera more dynamic range than it actually has. And look how simple that is. You just select the photos, go photo, photo merge, HDR. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question or an idea for a future video, maybe you have something that you really want to learn about that you want me to make a video on, let me know in the comments section down below. And lastly, if you guys like these videos from RMSP that we put out every single week, hit that subscribe button in the corner down there. And if you want to be updated when we post a new video, right next to the subscribe button, there's a little picture of a bell. You can click on that and turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever we upload. Thanks for watching.